You know, there's um, a grazing expert who once said, the irony of t today's dairy farm is that it's the nature of cows to move about and the nature of grass to stand in one place. But we made the cows stand in one place and made the grass move to the cows. Uh, my name's Francis Tickey, and uh, my wife Susan and I own Radiance Dairy. So we milk about 90 cows here, have about 160 head of all, of all ages, and um, we're organic, and we process the milk on the farm. So in this plant, we make several products. We uh, make bottled milk, whole milk in, in 2% and skim milk. And we bottle cream that comes off the skim milk in 2% as whipping cream. And um, we also make yogurt here in, in this plant and um, several kinds of cheeses. We sell our products um, here mostly locally in Fairfield uh, through three grocery stores and about 20 restaurants. So um, it gets to the store fairly quickly and we deliver to the stores twice a week. I'm Kevin Dietzel. Um, along with my wife Renee, we run uh, Lost Lake Farm. So we are a 100% grass-fed dairy with um, around 20 cows and we turn all the milk into cheese right here on farm. It started to occur to me that maybe I might enjoy cheese making and it might be a good way to be able to do a dairy farm, keep it small but on a fairly small acreage, relatively small acreage, but add value to that milk on farm and make a living in dairy farming by supplementing with cheese making. So this whole process is very artisan, as in very hands-on, um, and, and takes practice and a lot of know-how. Really the artisan part starts with the soil and the cows and the forages um, in order to have healthy ecosystems that it's coming from to get those healthy, good Iowa flavors into the milk and then have, so that we have good quality, good tasting milk to start with. And then essentially you're building on that. Everything that you're doing in the cheese making process is building on the quality and the taste that's inherent in the milk. We like to see our cows um, grazing the grass because, um, well, first of all, it starts with the soil, having really healthy soils. And um, we love to see our pastures with a variety of grasses. And so then our cows are getting a healthy salad versus like an iceberg lettuce um, salad. And we love to see them out harvesting um, their own pasture because we see that there is a, a symbiotic relationship, like the saliva from their mouths um, is interacting with the soil and the microbe life. Um, they are putting their manure out on the grass and, and their urine, and so then we don't have to be hauling quite as much uh, manure. We have about 60 paddocks. So the cows rotate through the pastures twice a day after milking to get fresh grass. And so that um, system of rotation it helps to build the soil, it makes more diversity in the landscape, and it um, keeps the cows healthier because they're in their natural environment eating their natural diet. We're seeing a lot of dairy farmers go out of business, both conventional and organic. And um, that's an unfortunate situation. But we're, we're really kind of separate from that system. We keep our price the same regardless of what the market does. Well, I think for people who are not farmers, they have a lot of power in their um, purchasing of food. If you, for example, buy food produced locally, um, that will support and help grow the local food infrastructure. And so I think that the time is right, was right then and is right now to have a dialogue about these things. We sold milk conventionally for four years and the price fluctuates. Um, continually so it's very hard to plan your income especially for a small dairy like us for big dairies there's price control and marketing that you can do so we've been shipping milk to Organic Valley for four years um, second generation Organic Valley farmers they mm -hmm. um, 
that was helpful. Your since parents my parents started in what, 2003. Mm -hmm. they started. I don't think it's a matter of efficiency per se. I think it's a matter of capital. The big confinement dairies have capital backing, and so um, if the market goes down for a while, they can weather that downturn and then hang on until the prices go back up again. Even in uh, COVID, where a lot of grocery stores are seeing an increase in demand for their products, the conventional price is still very low right now. And it's about the fourth or fifth year um, that it's been low. And so they're in a world of hurt right now. We're seeing um, most all small family conventional dairies are getting out of business or in a very tight financial spot. I guess the thing I like about our dairy farm is that there are so many opportunities to try to innovate and make things better. And then sharing that with other farmers. I, most of what I do, I learn from other farmers. I, I think that we need to look at how we can work together as farmers to make, make our agriculture profitable and not oversupply. I, uh, there's a quote I like to, to say that says, the best things rarely come by easy ways. And uh, I think that's true in agriculture that it might be easier to spray weeds. It might be easier to uh, keep cattle confined and be able to control their waste and um, yeah, keep them in a controlled environment. But I'm not sure that's the best thing. If I could pick my future, it would be more farms with uh, livestock out doing what they were meant to do.